Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We know it's been a long time since we did Transit Future, but we seriously want to do more. Stay tuned in the coming weeks for some exciting announcements. Of course, if you're not already, go follow me on Instagram for behind the scenes content. Today we're going to Denver, Colorado, a beautiful city east of the Rocky Mountains. Denver is the capital and largest city of the state of Colorado and is one of the fastest growing large cities in the United States, with a population of around 3 million in the Denver Aurora metropolitan area. Transit is becoming more and more important to the people working and living in the region. Furthermore, like several other great US cities, Denver approved a transit ballot measure in recent years in Denver's case Fast Tracks, which has led to an explosive rate of expansion in its rail network as of late. With the city having gone from zero to over 80 kilometers or 50 miles of high quality electrified regional rail with great frequencies in less than a decade, in a lot of ways Denver is a model for some aspects of what we want to see from Toronto's Go RER. The region's transit services are managed by the Regional Transportation District, or RTD for short. RTD operates a bus and rail system that has a service area of over 2,300 square miles, or 6,000 kilometers squared. The system has 180 bus routes, as well as 8 light rail lines, and 3 electrified regional rail lines. The rail lines have a combined total of 71 stations and 157 kilometers, or 98 miles of track. That being said, those commuter rail lines are a place where Denver sells itself short as the lines actually provide high-quality, two-way, all-day service that would be called regional rail in other cities. It's also worth noting that it's difficult to say exactly how many light rail lines Denver actually has, as the services are extensively interlined and, as such, it's hard to determine the best way of counting things. Before we dive into the RTD rail lines, let's take a look at the Amtrak line running through the Denver area. The Amtrak line, the California Zephyr, runs between Chicago and San Francisco, stopping at Omaha, Denver, and Salt Lake City through the beautiful Rockies. It stops at Denver Union Station, which is the central station of the city where pa passengers can get on RTD light rail, regional rail lines, as well as local buses. Now, let's move on to the rail services currently offered by RTD. Denver sees coverage from one of the largest and most heavily integrated light rail systems in the entire United States, featuring relatively typical Siemens vehicles and low platforms. That being said, the vehicles themselves are starting to show their age with internal stairs and the like. Denver's light rail network is also somewhat unique in that it has a number of single track and interline sections which limit frequencies. Now, onto the lines. First of all, we have the C line, which is our first light rail line. The line has 12 stations and it connects Union Station with Littleton, providing access to the sports venues of Denver, such as Coors Field, Pepsi Center, and the Broncos Stadium, as well as access to the university campus. After that, we have the D line, which was the first line in the system when it opened in just 1994. It has 12 stations, the route begins in downtown Denver at 19th Street, then it joins the C Line at 10th and Osage Station, running the same route all the way to Littleton. Next up is the E Line. It is one of the four routes that serves the southeast corridor of the system. It has 21 stations, and it runs from Union Station to Ridgegate Station in Lone Tree. Next, we have another line that serves the southeast corridor. The F Line also has 21 stations, and it follows a very similar route to the E Line. Although instead of starting from Union Station, it shares tracks with the D-Line from 18th Street to I-25 and Broadway Station. After that, we have the H-Line, which also serves the Southeast Corridor. It has 16 stations connecting downtown Denver to Aurora. It shares tracks with the D-Line from 18th Street in Denver to I-25 and Broadway Station, then follows the Southeast Corridor until just past Southmore Station, and then follows the I-225 to its southeastern terminus at Florida Station in Aurora. Next, we have the L Line, which is also called the Central Line. It opened as part of a service change in 2018 and is formed by a truncated section of the D Line. It has six stations starting from 38th and Blake in downtown, going to 16th Street and Stout, then looping back on California. Then we have the R Line, also known as the Aurora Line or the I-225 Rail. It has 16 stations serving Denver, Aurora, Greenwood Village, Centennial, and Lone Tree. It starts from Peoria Station in Aurora, then travels down south following I-225 to Bellevue Station in Denver. It then follows the I-25 to its terminus at Ridgegate Station in Lone Tree. And last but not least, we have the W Line, or the West Rail Line. It has 15 stations sharing tracks with the C Line and the E Line until Aurora West Station. Then it heads west through Lakewood, ending up at Jefferson County Government Center in Golden. 
Along with the light rail lines, we also have an express bus service called the Flat Iron Flyer. The route is 18 miles or 29 kilometers long, serving six stops in Denver, Aurora, and Boulder along the US Route 26. There are different levels of services available, including express straight to Boulder, as well as all-stop service. The route has drawn criticism for lacking a lot of BRT features, such as fully dedicated lanes and off-board fare payment. That being said, the highway right-of-way, as well as the sparse stops, mean that this bus route is a lot faster than many local bus lines. Last, we have the new regional rail lines. First, we have the A-Line, or the University of Colorado A-Line. The A-Line is a new electrified regional rail line that opened in 2016. It is 23 miles, or 38 kilometers long, and it serves 8 stations, connecting downtown Denver and Denver International Airport, as well as many other communities along Interstate 70. Fun fact, despite bearing the name, the A-Line actually doesn't serve the university, and the title is just that of a sponsorship. Next, we have the B-Line, which is another regional rail line. The B-Line is 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers long and it connects Denver's Union Station with Westminster. Currently, there are only four stations, two of which, in addition to Union Station, the G-Line has shared. But this is only the first phase of the project, and in the future, more will be added to the line, which we'll talk about later. Finally, we have the newly opened G-Line, or the Gold Line, which opened in early 2019. It has 8 stations and 11.2 miles or 18 kilometers of track. It also shares tracks with the B-Line until Picos Junction Station, and then continues west to Wheat Ridge and Arvada. The G-Line was severely delayed in its opening due to issues related to crossing signals and their interaction with positive train control. One of the signaling technologies used on the line, which is now mandated nationally in the United States. Now, let's talk about the future of RTD. The main development plan for transit expansion is the Fast Tracks expansion plan as mentioned before. It consists of new commuter rail, light rail, and express bus services, and in particular, six new rail lines with a combined length of 122 miles or 196 kilometers. It includes 57 new transit stops and also a now completed renovation of Denver Union Station into a multimodal transportation hub. Proposed in 2007, Fast Tracks was originally envisioned to be completed in 2017, but was set back by budget issues. The first few projects, the W Line, the A Line, the B Line, and the R Line, as well as the G Line, are now already open, and the rest of the expansion is coming along with the N Line likely next to open. As just mentioned, next we have the N Line, another electrified regional rail line. The line goes from downtown Denver to Thornton, running on an existing rail right of way. Construction is split into two phases. Phase 1 will be 13 miles or 21 kilometers long, as well as 7 stations. After phase 2, it will be 18.5 miles or 30 kilometers long, with 9 stations in total. Construction started in 2014, and the first phase is currently in testing with an opening set for early 2020. We do want to take a moment to look at Denver's now very nice regional rail network. By itself, while Denver's existing light rail network did serve the city well, it primarily connected communities to the south and west. The commuter network features faster trains and spreads the network further to the east, north, and northwest. In the future, the infrastructure would also be quite easily converted into a full metro subway system, which would be a big upgrade down the line. Now, let's talk about some extensions that are currently coming to existing rail lines. First, we have the L-Line extension. It would connect the existing downtown rail loop to the A-Line, extending from 30th and Downing Station to 38th and Blake Station, with two stations in between. Next, we have the Southwest Rail extension. The extension will extend the C and D lines into Highlands Ranch, adding an additional 2.5 miles or 4 kilometers of track, as well as one new station at C470 Lucen. And finally, we have the B-Line extension to Longmont. The first segment of the B-Line to Westminster was just the first segment in the full line to Longmont, which will be 41 miles or 66 kilometers long, passing through Adams County, Westminster, Broomfield, Louisville, Boulder, and Longmont. It will have 8 stations in total, providing reliable rush hour commuter service in the area. The whole route is estimated to be fully built out by 2040. In the meantime, the Flatiron Flyer is set to fill the service gap between these communities. Alright guys, hope you've enjoyed the video on the future of rapid transit in the Denver metropolitan area. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below telling us which cities you'd like to, us to do a video on next, as well as any suggestions on things we can do better in future videos. See you in the next one! Thank you.